But he's a healer of our bodies. Amen. Can you think about the most recent thing that the Lord done for you? I've got to share this. Last Sunday, you know, I was sick. And the last couple, two, three days before that, I was sick. And I wasn't able to eat just a little bit of soup. Now, when I can't eat, you know something's wrong with me. But when I got prayed for Sunday night, and we went out to eat. I was hungry. And I want to tell you, I did eat. What was a great thing? God healed my body last Sunday night. I praise his name. He'll do the same for you. I welcome you this morning. What a great God that we're serving. We've just come out of a great uh, uh, general assembly. We're on our way to heaven. And no turning back, but looking ahead, moving forward for Jesus Christ. Will you continue this worship with us as we pray and continue to worship Him with our singing and praise? Father, I'm so thankful. Lord, that you've entered your house this morning. For I know there's more than two or three has come here in your name. And we've come to worship you and to bless you. And, Lord, to be filled up and running over, that we can take that running over to the outside and tell others about what a great God that we serve. And, Lord, we bless you and we praise your name in the name of Jesus. I'd like to ask the choir if they'll come on up, kind of changing in our operations this morning. The choir will come on up to my left, your right, enter over here, and let's continue our worship.
you glad you're on the battlefield for Jesus this morning? Amen. All of the ground is sinking sand, but on Christ the solid rock, we can still stand this morning. Amen. Amen. Sing one more this morning. We're on page 393. 393 says, when we all get to heaven, I'm looking forward to going to heaven. Can you say amen? Oh, yeah. Sing it together with us.
that third verse with us now. Let us sing.
let me look out there and see your mouth not moving. I'll come have to pray with you real quick. Hallelujah. What a great week it was. Some great messages uh, by those that presented the word, delivered the word of God. But I am glad to be home this morning. Amen. Glad to be back in and, uh, the church here at Okoe. Glad to see what God has for us. A few days ago, a few weeks ago, actually, we celebrated Vacation Bible School 2012. And the sky was the theme this year. Everything is possible with God. And knowing that we were leading to a uh, family worship service just a few days after that, this this Sunday, I've asked them to hold all of their uh, singing and their videos until this day because I wanted to pull us all together and do it all at one time. I'm going to ask the musicians if you want to take your seat on the main floor, uh, we'll give you a break for a little while. And I'm going to ask all the Amplify students just a moment to be ready to come to stage to sing. And uh, if you were with us that night, there was some DVDs and some videos and things that we got to, to watch. If you're interested in getting any of those, you'll see Rebecca. Uh, she'll uh, maybe can work that out for you later. But they're going to come this morning, and they're going to sing for you. They're going to sing two songs. And, and I, you may have saw some of the kids around in their Sky VBS shirts today. Some of the group leaders are here with them. They're going to sing with them. So can I ask all the Amplify students, all the group leaders, station leaders, our VBS director and her husband, if they'll come, and let's just welcome them to this stage this morning as they sing for the Lord. Now, you know, there's always a favorite song. There's always one that goes over well with everybody. And they're going to do that one, but not first. They're going to do it second, I think. And I've got my favorite. Amen. You kids, come on up to the front here. All the way to the front. All the way to the front. All the way. There you go. Hallelujah. Now, I think we need a student leader or two down in the front. So, Cherith and Allie and uh, Samantha, were you not the music leaders for BBS? Come on down and uh, let's help these girls and these boys out this morning. Amen. Come on, Allie. Get down here. One, we'll get over in front of Brother Summerall. Allie, you and Posey come over here in front of Pastor Renfro and I. And uh, you can turn and face the kids. It may help them a little bit. And uh, they're going to sing two for you this morning. The first one is Counting on God. You worship with them as they sing today. sing one more. I think you'll recognize this one. How many of you are ready to fly away when Jesus comes? Amen. Worship with them as they sing I Fly Away this morning. Maybe give them a little more monitor on stage if you will. <laughs>
Amen. Thank you. Let's give Amplify one more hand clap of appreciation this morning. Hallelujah. I do believe everything is possible with God this morning. Amen. Amen. I ask you to prepare your hearts for giving this morning. Today is Give Big Sunday. Something that should not come as a surprise to you is we live in a world that operates through finances. As the July calendar came out, I challenged you to meet us in prayer here at 5.30 on Sunday afternoons for this entire month for our church, and for camp meeting. I believe tomorrow as we launch a series of services called Camp Meeting, I believe God's going to be with us. I don't believe we have to wait till tomorrow night. Can you say amen? Brother Hanks is already with us. He's in service this morning. Many of you got the news of his mother passing early yesterday morning. I talked to him yesterday, and I said, Pastor, we will do whatever we need to do. If you need to go and be with your family, he said, no, sir. He said, uh, we're going to take care of camp meeting. Brother Sullivan and I communicated this morning before Sunday school, and he is scheduled to be in town, as many of you know. I'm picking him up in the morning at the airport, and we're going to have church. As I have been praying this month, asking God to be with us, to meet our needs, to, to challenge us both spiritually and, and as families, just to, to be all that God's called us to be. We led into the month of July. I had them put on the calendar and shared with you and communicated with you about our Give Big Sunday. It is no secret that we live in a society and an economy that is in recession. I say very little from this pulpit about finances. Actually, I allow usually, if you're with us on Sundays or even on Wednesdays, a lot of times I allow associate or staff pastors to receive offerings only because I want to keep my mind clear and focused on the Word of God that's at hand. However, I do believe as a leader, as a pastor, as your shepherd, there are times when you need to hear from your shepherd and from your pastor, and today is one of those days. If you've been in our business meetings, you know that I have shared with you very openly that we have ran a deficit in the first quarter of this month of this year. If you're with us in our business meetings or you received communication from my office, which all of you should have, we made cutbacks in the month of June to help offset that. I will tell you, uh, we're not finished with July yet, and we are running a deficit in the month of July as well. Pastor, what does that mean? That means we're going to have to pray a little harder and believe God a little harder, and we're going to have to give. Reading this morning from the book of 2 Kings chapter number 3, verse number 
15 and following. But now bring me a minstrel. It came to pass when the minstrel pray, played that the hand of the Lord came upon him, and he said, Thus saith the Lord, Make this valley full of ditches. For thus saith the Lord, You shall not see wind, neither shall you see rain, neither the valley shall be filled with water, that you may drink both ye and your cattle and your beast. And this is but a light thing in the sight of the Lord. He will deliver the Moabites also into your hand. And ye shall smite every fenced city and every choice city, and shall fill and shall fill every good tree, and stop all the wells of water, and mar every good piece of land with stones. And it came to pass in the morning, when the meat offering was offered, that behold, there was water by the way of Edom, and the country was filled with water. What I've read to you is that passage out of Second Kings chapter 3 regarding the valley of ditches, if you will. If you will allow yourself to be taken to Scripture and allow your mind to focus on this just for a moment as you prepare your offering this morning. We find a story of God giving instructions that aren't quite logical, but yet results were not short of a miracle. God at times has asked men and women and has asked us to do things before He blesses us. And in this passage, three kings of Israel, the king of Judah, the king of Edom, the three kings came together to defend themselves against an evil nation called Moab. They joined together their armies against that evil place. Throughout biblical history, God often required people to do something to invoke His blessings on their life. He asked Moses to stretch his rod over the Red Sea, which resulted in the children of Israel walking through on dry land. Not long after getting to the other side of the Red Sea, they were out of water. There came, they, and they came upon a bitter stream. God again instructed Moses. Moses was instructed to cast a branch into the water, and before they knew it, they were drinking good potable or fresh water. Oftentimes, the blessings of God will come to us after we obey Him. Even though God may ask us to do something that doesn't make sense to you and I this morning, can I remind you that we need to trust the Lord? Can I remind you that He will never ask us to do anything that, that He hasn't planned for us and He knows the other side of it way before we do? And I've challenged you this morning. I've asked you to be ready to give big this morning. Looking across this congregation, there are probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 100 people in this building this morning. If you can give an offering this morning in addition to your tithes per person to help us this morning, it would go a long way to meet the needs of our church. Pastor, why on a, why on a Sunday like this? It's family worship. Yes, it is. We are a family. We need one another. This has been designated as Give Big Sunday. I have dug some ditches in this place this week. I laid on the floor in my office last night. Can I just be honest with you? I say, God, if you don't help this pastor, I'm not going to make it. God, if you don't help this pastor, I'm not going to live. I'm not going to make it. Why do you say that, Pastor? Because I realize we are on the brink of what God has called us to do. The enemy does not like it when you consecrate time to prayer and to study. The enemy does not like it when you join together as a corporate body on 530s on Sunday afternoons and say, we're going to pray because we want to see God. He does not like it. But I, can I remind you that greater is he that's within me than he that's within the world this morning? Can I remind you that we are no greater than each other? We're all equal at the cross of Calvary, and we're a family this morning. Your church needs you this morning. Say, so, Pastor, this is the Sunday before camp meeting. I know that. One of our speakers are already in, in the area, already in service with us this morning. 
today is family worship. It is Give Big Sunday. Your church needs you to give big today. I'm asking if you can join with Sister Wendy and I. We both, in addition to our tithes that we give, will be given an additional $100 today per person. Say, Pastor, at 100 people in this building, if everybody does that, that will be a give big offering. Yes, it will. That's what we need this morning. Would you help us today? Father, we love you today. Father, I don't take this pulpit lightly. Lord, when it comes to a time of worship, I don't say much at all about the need as far as the finances from a pastoral perspective on Sundays. God, I don't believe that's the, the time or the place. I believe that is a business setting issue. Father, I believe you have dealt with this pastor. And Lord, as you've led us to this Give Big Sunday, Father, I felt it was no one else's place but the shepherd of this church to stand before these, your people, your sons and your daughters, and ask them this morning to respond to the need of their church. Father, I don't want to have to make decisions based on ministry. Well, I don't have to base, make decisions, Lord, based on what we can and cannot do. You have always been faithful to this church. Father, and this morning, I know it'll be no different. I pray this morning you'll tug on the hearts of men and women alike, that you'll bless us. Those that are bringing their tithes, God, that, that belongs to you, I pray that you'll bless them for it. Your word says that you will. Father, and those this morning that are going to give above and beyond that, their give big offering. I pray this morning that you'll bless that as well, that you'll multiply it to meet the operating needs of our church. God, you know the battle I have faced in my own mind, in my own body this week. But I believe it's been no more than an attack of the enemy. Father, but I rebuke him in the name of Jesus Christ this morning, realizing Satan cannot cross the bloodline. This church was purchased with his blood. This church belongs to Jesus. Thank you for what you're going to do for us in this place this morning. We'll forever give you praise, honor, and glory for it. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. And the church said amen. And amen. Ushers, would you come this morning and wait upon the people as they give today?
Keeps us in the narrow way. Come on, children, let's sing. Come on, children, let's shout. God Almighty has brought us out. None like him without a doubt. Come on, children, let's sing about the goodness of the Lord. He has been my all and all. He has never let me fall. That is why I can sing. That is why I can shout. Let's sing about the goodness of the Lord. Come on, children, let's shout all about God's rich reward. When he guides our footsteps every day, keeps us in the narrow way. Come on, children, let's sing about the goodness of the Lord. Come on, children, let's sing about the goodness of the Lord. Come on, children, let's shout. All about God's rich reward. He guides our footsteps every day. Keeps us in the narrow way. Come on, children, let's sing. Come on, children, let's shout. God Almighty has brought us out. None like it without a doubt. Come on, children, let's sing about the goodness of the Lord. He has been my own. Shout, cause I know what it's all about, the goodness of the Lord. He has, he has been my all in all. He has been. can shout all I know what it's all about the goodness of Hallelujah. the Lord come on children come on children let's sing about the goodness of the Lord come on children let's shout all about God's rich reward he guides our footsteps every day Keeps us in the narrow way. Come on, children, let's sing about the goodness of the Lord. Come on, children, let's sing about the goodness of the Lord. Come on, children, let's shout all about God's rich reward. He guides our footsteps every day. Keeps us in the narrow way. Come on, children, let's sing. Come on, children, let's shout. God Almighty has brought us out, none like him without a doubt. Come on, children, let's sing about the goodness of the Lord. He has been my all in all. He has never let me fall. Why I can sing, that is why I can shout. Cause I know what it's all about the goodness of the Lord. Come on, children, come on, children, let's sing about the goodness of the Lord. Come on, children, let's shout. All about God's rich reward. He guides our footsteps every day. Keeps us in the narrow way. 
Come on, children, let's sing about the good news of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why we can sing. And that's why we can shout. Because we know what it's all about. The goodness of the Lord. Amen. And, and a word, amen, that came back to me, amen, when Pastor was talking earlier. Amen. The scripture that the Lord been laying on my heart, amen, for a couple of weeks is, my God shall supply all our needs. Hallelujah. According to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So when I can't see my way and the struggle seems so hard, he said, my God shall, not maybe, not might or could or oh, yeah. but it said he shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. Oh, yeah. Amen. And we can stand on Amen, the word of God. Hallelujah. Give God a hand clap of praise. How truly my God is good. Amen, his mercy endures forever. When he calls me, I will answer. When he calls me, I will answer. When he calls me, I will answer. Somewhere listening for my name. One more time. When he calls me, I will answer. When he calls me, I will answer. When he calls me, I will answer. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. Well, I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. But when he calls me, I will answer. When he calls me, I will answer. When he calls me, I will answer. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. Oh, I'll be somewhere Oh, I'll be somewhere Oh, I'll be somewhere listening for my name. Oh, I'll be somewhere Oh, I'll be somewhere Oh, I'll be somewhere listening for my name. Oh, when he calls me, I will answer. When he calls me, I will answer. When he calls me, I will answer. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. Well, I'll be somewhere listening. Well, I'll be somewhere listening. Well, I'll be somewhere listening for my name. I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. Well, I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. Well, I'll be somewhere listening. Well, I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. For when he calls me, I will answer. When he calls me, I will answer. When he calls me, I will answer. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. Well, I'll be somewhere listening. Well, I'll be somewhere listening. Well, I'll be somewhere listening for my name. Well, I'll be somewhere listening. Well, I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere well listening for my name. Well, give the Lord a hand clap of praise for that this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Remain standing, if you will, for the reading of God's Word. Going to the book of Ma Matthew this morning. The book of Matthew, chapter number 14. Thank you, musicians. Matthew, chapter number 14 this morning, beginning with verse number 15 and following. Matthew 14. 
beginning with verse number 15 and following. And when it was evening, his disciples came to him, saying, There is a desert place, and the time is now past. Send the multitude away, that they may go into the villages and buy themselves victuals. But Jesus said unto them, They need not depart. Aren't you thankful Jesus has got what you need this morning? They need not depart, give ye them to eat. But they, the disciples, said unto him, We have here but five loaves and two fishes. He said, Jesus said, Bring them hither to me. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass, took the five loaves and the two fishes, and looking up to heaven, he blessed and brake, and gave the loaves to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude. And they did all eat and were filled. And they took up of the fragments that remained twelve baskets full. And they that had eaten were about five thousand men beside women and children. For a little while this morning, God helping me, going to preach to us on this thought. Take it to Jesus. Take it to Jesus. By the show of hands, anybody been talking to Jesus lately? Anybody been trying to unload on Jesus lately? Amen. Take it to Jesus. Father, thank you for the songs that have been sung this morning. Thank you for the words, God, that have been said. Thank you, Lord, for the Spirit of God that is alive and well and in our hearts and in our lives and in this place today. Father, I pray now that you'll hide me as your servant, the shepherd of this congregation behind the cross of Calvary. Lord, I am absolutely nothing without you, but I do pray and I do ask and I do desire that your Holy Ghost of heaven will anoint me now, lead me, guide me, and direct me, Lord, through this opportunity to deliver the gospel message. Lord, to share from my heart and from these notes, God, that that you have placed in our spirit this week. Help us now, Lord, and we'll forever be grateful for it. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. And the church said amen. Amen. And amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise as you're seated in his presence this morning. Take it to Jesus. Today we live in a day that we can sum up and say that it is a day of ulcers and a day of headaches and a day of tension. We can say it's a time of frustration, a time of worry, a, worry, a time of anxiety. It's a period of distress, a period of uncertainty, a period of confusion. It, it seems that sometimes the, the loads and the burdens that you carry are almost unbearable. But can I remind you this morning that you don't have to carry it all by yourself yourself you can take it to Jesus yeah. times we live in today as they become more and more complex as it seems that mankind drifts further away from the simple life of Jesus Christ as difficulties and troubles become so much more overloading can I remind you that you do not have to carry it alone we must realize that people everywhere are seeking a solution to their problem why well, I'm thankful for study groups I'm thankful for committees and I'm thankful for help programs. There's nothing like the feet of Jesus. People everywhere are seeking a solution for their problems. They're consulting specialists who have, who have their own problems that they can't solve. Many of these specialists are trying to solve the problems of humanity with, with the godless theories of, of those that, that don't even recognize God for who He is. Thus their client or their patient or their family member leaves from that setting being even more frustrated than they were when they started the process. A number of individuals are doing a very good job at diagnosing the problems of understanding the difficulties in their life, but in reality they have little or no solution to the problem. I can give you the answer this morning. It's wrapped up in five letters. His name simply is Jesus. But yet we find ourselves so busy simply because we do not realize that Jesus Christ is the solution to every problem and every need that we have in our human life. The Word of God says, But my God shall supply all your need according to His riches in glory, in glory by Christ Jesus. If there is a need in my life, or a need in your life, or a need in your family, we need to take it to Jesus this morning, because in Christ uh, there is sufficiency. Number one this morning, Jesus can, Jesus can meet all your needs. 
Pastor, you don't know what I'm facing. You don't know my Jesus. Pastor, you don't know what the doctors have said. My friend, you don't know my Jesus. Pastor, you don't know what my family has told me, what my sons and my daughters have shared with me. Church, you don't know the Jesus that I serve. Famishing thousands stood on the hillside after having listened to Jesus. After listening to who he was and hearing his discourse and seeing his miracles, his disciples come and said, Send the multitude away that they may go into the villages, buy themselves something to eat. This same treatment that we see the disciples saying about the multitude is the same treatment that we see happening at the hands of men and women today when it comes to our crisis hour we can say nothing to them but send them away but can I remind you that should not be the case of those that know who Jesus is that should not be the case of one who's been born again and fellowshiped into the family of God that place was a desert place there was nowhere to purchase food and can I remind you that human supplies were exhausted except for just a little bit of bread and a couple of fish seems in our world today that we have no options it seems that we as Christians have no voice it seems that we as people that love the Lord if we make a statement if we try to provide a help or a solution we're looked at as if we're the odd person can I remind you that we as long as there is a God in heaven we still have a few five barley loaves and a few two fishes can you say amen Jesus told his disciples they need not depart give ye them to eat now that seems like an overwhelming task when you've got five loaves of bread and two fishes and 5,000 men not counting women and children and Jesus the master of it all all says just give them something to eat disciples said but we have just just a little bit Lord they realized the disciples realized the need they even diagnosed the, the situation but they had no solution we've become good I believe that handling the diagnosis we've been we, we've we've been very become very good at saying this is the issue we 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 we've become very good at saying i know what's wrong but we fail to remind people that there is an answer jesus said bring them hither to me bring what those five loaves five loaves and two fishes just bring them to me jesus is able to take care of it this morning there in a desert land, Jesus spreads a table for what some will say will be 15 or more thousand people, 5,000 men, not counting the women and children. And the word of God says, and they did all eat. We're going to do that in just a few moments. And we're filled. They took up the fragments that remained, 12 baskets full. This shows us that God not only deals with supplying the needs of humanity, but Ephesians 3 and 20 says that he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think. What have you asked the Lord for lately? I mean, what have you got down into an, an atmosphere and, a, and an attitude and a spirit of prayer? And ha, ha, I mean, how long has it been uh, since you've communed with God and you've let God commune with you uh, and you really asked Him, uh, Lord, what would you have for me and my life to do? And allowed Him to meet your every need exceedingly, abundantly, above all we could ask or we could even think. Our Lord Jesus deals in superlatives. He deals in that superabundance. All of your needs today can be met in Christ Jesus. We hear him say in this recording here in our text, Bring them hither to me. When we have taken our difficulties and when we have taken our problems and our cares, oh, when you take that sickness or that burden and when you give it to him, you can simply hear him say like he told the disciples, there's no need for them to depart. What was he saying? Oh, they may not have what they think they need, but they've got Jesus Christ, which is all that we need. And if I will give my care and my burden and my, faith, my, my worry to him he is all that I need we don't need to depart from Jesus for anything for in Christ all of our difficulties have been met it 
seems so simple that we say the answer to all of our problems and the answer to our issues and our frustrations, I know they're complex. The answer, it seems so simple to say that the answer is Jesus Christ, but human problems are so complicated that man, mankind is looking for a complex answer. But Jesus tells us in John 14 and 6, he simply says, I am the way. You mean, Pastor, I don't have to go look to the left or the right? No, my friend, if you'll start with Jesus, you'll find all that you need this morning. Pastor, I don't have to run hither and thither. No, my friend, I'm not saying that all those things are negative, but what I am saying is that we need to seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all of these other things shall be added unto you. He is God's way. Jesus is God's way to man, and it's man, mankind's way to God, and we must realize that we need to take it to Jesus this morning. He, Jesus Christ, is our way out of difficulties and troubles. He is our way to heaven. Can you say amen? Number two this morning, Jesus can master all your cares. There's a difference in being able to deal with something and being able to master something. I believe the statement goes like this, a amateur is one who will practice and practice and practice until he gets it right. A professional is one that will practice and practice and practice until he, until he can't get it wrong. There's a difference. I may know how to do something, but it doesn't mean I'm the master of it. But can I remind you that Jesus Christ is more than someone who wants to hear from you and wants you to cast your care upon Him. But He can master all of your needs and cares this morning. The Word of God, we have no record where anybody ever came to Jesus with cares or burdens or problems or sickness or whatever it may have been or sin itself that Jesus could not master all about us we see mankind that has been locked and trapped and harassed with this concept of fear and anxiety cast down by the pressures of life and it's, it's so overwhelming that it shows up on their physical body and, and all we have to do is remind ourselves and remind them hey Jesus can master all of your cares He's the one that created you and I. He is the one that was there from the beginning. And He can take care of us this morning. Many people are filled with fear. Multitudes are on the verge of nervous breakdowns and mental disorder. Worry itself is robbing mankind of health and putting people under a strain that is causing heart disease to be the number one enemy of our time. Why? Because Jesus needs to know this morning that you want to trust Him with everything everything oh can I just take it to Jesus this morning can I just leave it at the altar one more time and say God I'm not the master of anything I don't know how to do anything at all but Lord you're my master Jesus you're my savior Jesus you're my one who provides this morning can I leave it at the foot of the cross this morning in fact Paul tells us the apostle Paul we should not worry about any thing we was to vote this morning we believe that to be the word of God how many of us have to vote this morning and say oh we've sinned some this week because we worry let me remind you 1 Corinthians 7 32 I would have you without carefulness Philippians 4 and 6 be careful for nothing Jesus 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 has the answer for all your cares no, no matter if they're family, no matter if they're business, no matter if they're home, no matter if they're related, whatever it is this morning, Jesus has the answer. And I'm asking you this morning, have you taken it to Jesus? The Apostle Peter preached this on a Wednesday night a few weeks ago as we were in First Peter. The Apostle Peter said in First Peter 5 and 7, Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Many of us are trying to take our life in our own hands, trying to work out our own problems, and trying to do it our way. But Christ is saying, bring them hither to me. 
Christ is telling us as he told those disciples who had a need that day. He said, Lord, Jesus, do you not see the multitude? We don't have anything but a few loaves and, and a couple of fishes. And Jesus simply says, bring them hither to me. If you're a parent, there's something about that parent relationship with that child that when that child is worried or upset or stressed or, 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 or confused, there's something about the words that come from a parent that comforts that child. Let me give you an example. To my knowledge, this is hypothetical. I don't think it's occurred in my family. If it has, so be it. But that child comes to that parent, to that mother or that father, and they're concerned with relationships, and they're concerned with the woes of life, and they're, they're concerned with, with what people are saying or doing or thinking about them. And that parent makes a statement similar to this, Honey, it'll be okay. Jesus will take care of it. Something about that parent being connected with that child, it calms their nerves, it calms their frustration, it calms their anxiety. Can I tell you much more than an earthly father to an earthly child is our heavenly father through the blood of Jesus Christ time to tell each and every one of us this morning, if you'll just cast it upon Jesus, if you'll just give it to Jesus, if you'll just bring it to him, he will deal with the issue. Anxiety. Worry, carefulness could be evidence of a lack of faith and trust and confidence in God. I've tried my best, even if I've studied this week, saying, Lord, please don't let me be one that doesn't have faith or confidence in God. Please let me be one that when I get up in the morning and put these feet on the floor and I say, God, help me, let me be one that has faith in a God that loves me. God calls upon us to unload on Him, commit His ways, our ways to Him, to trust Him. He will bring it simply to pass. A little poem that you may know, you may have heard. Said the robin to the sparrow, I should really like to know why these anxious human beings rush about and hurry so? Said the sparrow to the robin. Friend, I think it must be that they have no heavenly father such as cares for you and me. Makes you think this morning. If we truly believe that he is God. If we truly believe that he sent Jesus who died on the cross and was buried and rose again. If we truly believe that through his blood there is power. If we believe that he takes care of those that, 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 that have no ways of, of, of sowing and reaping. If we believe all of that, why do we not let him take care of our pains this morning? Number three this morning, Jesus cares for you in the difficulties of life. He cares for you in the minute details of life. I get hung up sometimes in details. It's a flaw that I have. I can't help it. I like to know how you're going to transition from this to this. What's it look like? What's it sound like? Where are they going to go? How are they going to park? Where are they going to... I get caught up in the details. That's not always good. Can I tell you, for people like me, Jesus cares about even those that care about the smallest detail. And Jesus cares about your details this morning. Pastor, my issue, my concern, my, my load, my weight, my care seems to be so small compared to those around me, even in this place this morning. It doesn't matter how big or small it may be to them or to you. If it's important to you, it can be important to God if you'll give it to me interested in the task of that housewife that may not ever leave that home to go and provide a paycheck but cares for that family. He's concerned with you this morning. He's concerned with that one who has those duties day in and day out. He's interested in the common laborer with all of his thoughts. He's interested in the businessman or businesswoman with their complex issues and problems that they must face. The master 
the master who gave the rose its heavenly scent and made the lily a symbol of purity and clothed the fields with green grass and feeds the fowls of the air is saying to you, I care about all of your difficulties. Just bring them hither to me. I wonder if we truly believe that he's God. Why do we fret? Oh, I'm preaching to myself. Why do, we, why do we have care? Why do we worry? Why do we allow our emotions to be so short and our tensions to be so tight that we can't function? Why do we do that if we believe that Jesus cares for us? You've lost your health. You've lost your job. You've lost your loved one. You've lost a friend. You've tried everything. You still fail. Can I recommend to you this morning that you take your problems to Jesus? Reminded in Hebrews 13 5, for God says, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Jesus Christ does not promise you that you will not have burdens, but he does say in Matthew 11 and 30, My yoke is easy, and my burden is light. He has promised to relieve you and to make your burden light. He has promised to, to be there with you. Why would someone not want to take their problems to Jesus? He says, but, and I've referenced it already, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of these things shall be added unto you. Even the temporal necessities of life will be added when Jesus is in his proper place in our life. There are many examples where Sicknesses were taken to Christ. And I'll use that as an illustration this morning to help us understand the importance of bringing or taking our needs to Jesus Christ. Mark 5, the woman with the issue of blood who had suffered for 12 years with that disease came to Jesus. The Word of God said she had suffered many, many things of many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. Well, that's pretty bad. I realize that God gives us what some call ministers of mercy, what some call physicians and, and those of hell. I'm not taking away from them at all. But I also believe that after she had consulted the best skilled and the wisest physicians, all of her attempts for healing were only aggravated and she grew not better but worse. But on the heels of everybody else's failure, she took them to Jesus, and Jesus said, What can I do about this? Allow me to take on that load. Allow me to lighten that burden. Allow me to answer that prayer. Jesus Christ took care of her sickness, and we must realize that as we have vital contact with Jesus, he conquered her troubles, and he'll conquer our troubles. For he is not only a specialist in what he does, but he is a Curer or one who cures the issue. Pastor, do you absolutely, with all that's within you, believe that this morning? Church, I have no other option but to believe it. If you could fix the mess you're in, you'd have already fixed it. If you'd have fixed the mess your family is in, whether it be your fault, their fault, or no one's fault, you would have already fixed it. It's time that we do exactly what Dr. Williams said on Friday night, that we get back to the Word of God and realize that there is a God that loves us, and He's waiting for us just to call upon Him. He's waiting for us to bring our cares to Him so that He can care for us. And the case in your life is turned over to Him. He doesn't only properly diagnose it. Aren't you thankful that he can do that? But he also has the answer or the remedy. He is always equal to every emergency in your life. You mean that phone call that wakes me out of sleep, that's an urgent situation? Yes, God's already equal to it and able to handle it. You mean that, that call or that letter that I give to, that throws my world upside down? God can handle it? Yes, my friend. He's equal and better than any emergency that you ever face. He has never been known to be defeated. 
you want to see Jesus at his best, just take a difficult case to him. When people get to the end of their selves and have gone through their limitations, Jesus Christ shows up. Reminded of that old song. Simply says, when he's four days late, he's always right on time. When he's four days late, he's still just at the appropriate time. Thou canst believe all things are possible to him that believe. The words were spoken by our Lord Jesus Christ in the days challenge, in the days of challenging difficulties. Christ was a conqueror. Christ was a healer. He took on our infirmities, our sicknesses, our things that we may live. And I'm amazed, and I follow you. I'm amazed at the people that will believe Jesus can save their soul from sin, but can't heal their physical body. Think about it. If, if you really believe that Jesus can redeem you by the blood that was shed on Calvary from your sins, why would you not believe he can heal your body? Yet there are those today that struggle with that concept. Pastor, I believe he can save me. His word says he can. Yes, and it also says he can heal you. And if you'll allow me, he can deliver you out of whatever lion's den you're in. Yes, he forgives sin. But he can also certainly heal the human body that he made. You are no exception. He can heal you too. He is the one who will turn your heartaches into hallelujahs, your burdens into blessings, and your troubles into triumphs. Oh, what do I have to do, Pastor? You've got to take it to him. You've got to allow him to be the one who says, bring them hither to me. And then when he does, you follow and you respond and you leave them at the feet of Jesus. Closing this morning. Sister Rachel, Sister Lizzie, somebody come. A Methodist preacher by the name of Luther Bridges. You may find this interesting. Listen closely. Accepted an invitation to minister at a conference in Kentucky in the year of 1910. He left his family in the care of his father-in-law and made the trip to Kentucky. There in Kentucky, two wonderful weeks of ministry resulted. The last service closed and with great joy, and he was excited to be called to the telephone. He couldn't wait to tell his wife about all the blessings, but it wasn't her voice on that long-distance line. He listened in silence to the news that a fire had burned down his father-in-law's house. And his wife and all three of his sons had died in the blaze. This distraught father leaned heavily on his Savior and expressed his faith in God during a tearful moment by penning these words. Though sometimes he leads through waters deep, trials fall across the way. Though sometimes the path seems rough and steep, see his footprints all the way. You may recognize this course. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my ever longing, keeps me singing as I go. We have sung that song around the Christian world many, many times over and over again. If you hear that song, possibly you thought it was written Maybe in a camp meeting style service, but it wasn't. It was written in a time of sorrow and woe, hanging heavy on the head of this man. And he simply says, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Can I remind you in that time of void, in that time of emptiness, in that time of sorrow, in that time of heartache, there is a Jesus who can occupy the vacuum. You take your problems to Jesus, you need not worry this morning. For if you are friendless, he is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. If my father and mother forsake you, the Lord will take you up. If you are weary, he is the shadow of a great rock in a weary land. If you're going through a trial, 
in the heat of the day, I mean, it seems like all hell assails you. He is your shade on the right hand. If you are sick, He is your specialist. In fact, you can just name your difficulty and Jesus is equal to and greater than whatever it may be. If you are weary, I mean just weary, weary of life, disappointed, faint-hearted, discouraged, overwhelmed, ready to give up because of life and life itself, and I tell you, there is one who I've experienced. His name is Jesus. And he allows me to take it all and leave it upon the altar of God. He allows me this morning to cast all my cares upon him, for he careth for me. He allows me this morning that when I'm in a desert place and need food, I don't need to go somewhere else. I just need to bring to him what I have. He will bless it. He will break it. He will multiply it to meet the needs that are there. I invite you this morning. I invite you this morning. Take it all to Jesus. Stand with me. Heavenly Father, thank you for your touch this morning. Thank you for being with us in a special way in this place today. Father, as this pastor cried his heart out to you last night, and again this morning, Lord, I feel your presence this morning. I realize that I have taken that load and that burden, and I've given it to Jesus today. Lord, and I need not worry what today holds or tomorrow holds, for I know who holds my today and my tomorrow. Lord, and if I live to see daylight in the morning, I'll get up and say, this is the day the Lord has made. I choose. I will. I gladly will respond and rejoice and be glad in it. Father, today I, I bring that load of every family, of every individual, of every mother and father and son and daughter. I bring that load to you this morning. And I pray, God, that your word has challenged them in such a way, God, that they will take that step and they will bring unto you that item, that load, that burden they're carrying. God, you could come and take it from them. God, you're wanting us to be obedient this morning. You're wanting us to call upon you. You're wanting us, I believe, to follow the instructions you gave the disciples when you said, bring them hither. Unto me. Lead us in this service, I pray. We'll forever be grateful for it. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Church, I know we have arrangements for lunch, and I want all of you to stay. But I believe there may be some hurting folks in this place this morning that says, Pastor, I need to take it to Jesus this morning. We'll wait on you. I'm not worried about lunch. I'll be okay. I can do without. I'd much rather you get what you need from Jesus. So this morning, every head bowed, every eye closed, no one looking around. You say, Pastor, there are some things in my life that I need to take to Jesus. Would you simply just raise your hand straight up and straight back down? I won't embarrass you. I'll do my best. I won't embarrass you. But there are some things, Pastor, that I need to take to Jesus. Thank you. Hands went up all across this building. Now would you put some faith on that action? Would you step out of that pew this morning and would you come? And would you follow the instructions that Jesus gave his disciples? And would you bring them hither to Jesus? Would you step out of that pew this morning? And would you come to this altar and say, Lord, I'm following the words of you. I'm following the instruction of the word of God. When I bring to you my cares, and I cast it upon you this morning. Would you come this morning? I'll wait on you. I'll wait on you. They're beginning to move. I saw hands go up on both sides. Anybody else want to come and take it to Jesus? Oh, Pastor, I don't want anybody to know. Church, I wouldn't care about what people know. I would care about getting my need to the Lord. Pastor, I don't want nobody to know that I'm discouraged or that I'm heavy laden or I'm burdened. I would much rather Jesus take care of it than to carry it out of this place today. 
Anybody else this morning? Anybody else this morning? Anybody else this morning? All right, there are folks on this altar, young and old alike, that need Jesus. Can I ask for some of you saints to come and gather around them? So young people to come and gather around some of these students and some, some individuals that will wrap your arms around them spiritually and say, hey, just give it all to Jesus this morning. Would you come today? Would you come today, sing Sister Rachel? Would you come today? Would you come today? Let's pray as a family. Oh, Jesus is right. Whatever's wrong in your life Jesus is right Whatever's wrong in your life Just give him a chance He will prove every word that he says is true Jesus is right Whatever's wrong